hello and see i did it just like you did it at the video hello and thank you for tuning into the zen af podcast i don't do the intros much because that's alex's gig but unfortunately alex had um he got into a a uh he got into fisticuffs with a bottle of tequila so you can find us on all of the things you can find us on the apples and on the spotify's you can find us inside you you could find us outside you you could find us all over your front lawn um make sure you hit subscribe at zafpod.com make sure you send us an email at contact at something i don't know our own email address but that's not important (laughs) shut up alex i'm talking (laughs) hi alex hi wayne happy father's day happy father's day to you man yeah and happy birthday to your daughter she's 10 today 10 today what 10 today I don't want to talk about it. That freaks me the fuck out. Yeah, it's freaky. I've been through it. It's freaky. Speaking of um, daughters, Hannah posted quite the um, quite the post for, for you with your pictures of you yes, loving life and being happy. Years. Over the oh, years. Oh, shit. Man, you know, it's funny. Like, So I, I got home late last night because we had a show last night, and then we went out, of course. And then uh, I woke up this morning, and I was getting – text from my kids and they tried to call me but of course i was still in bed and uh, i'm like what is going on (laughs) i forgot it was father's day i was like what's happening (laughs) is everything okay yeah that's exactly how i felt like what the it's oh my god please don't tell me like their dog died or i don't know like something like and then i'm like oh wait it's father's day like i don't like my father so of course i don't i don't think about father's day you know what i mean yeah Um, yeah interesting though so um oh man so the director of the original grease came to the show last night with john travolta living in john so the director of that movie he's like he's like three thousand years old and uh and then uh actually there was quite a few uh, industry people at the show last night which was interesting and they all they all dug it you know so that's cool so does that mean does that mean that um you're gonna get to play uh, in the new Grease movie that he's making, I and really hope be... they don't make a new Grease movie. I mean, that the original one's so good. And don't, stop. Listen, was can we so? stop making movies that have already been done? I mean, there's a thousand billion scripts out there that have been was put on the fucking shelves. Don't just pick one of those up. Dust make it off. some new make... movies. Yes, thank you, thank you. Spread your wings a little bit. Spread your um, legs just a tad. Just a little tiny bit, just the tip of it. I just want to see you your world. Me. So open your thighs. I started watching uh, the Land Before Time, the original movie last night with oh, with shit. Harper, and it's fucking horrible. Mm-hmm. But I was stoned, so it was magnificent. It was but, magnificent, but still sad. <laughs> like there's one part in the movie, and this this came out in 1988, so I was nine. You were 19. And um oh wow. How old would you have been in 1988? I was uh I was born in 72 so I would be 16. Wow. 16. So I wasn't far off. So don't take offense. Well, I mean to that. Yeah. I don't I'm not good at math. Anyways, there's a part in that movie <laughs> relatively to the close to the beginning where the Brontosaurus mom from mm-hmm. Little Feet, which is one of the main characters, okay. um, she gets like a, a huge chunk ripped out of her back, and they Ooh. show that, and t- and then the the, the the dinosaur dies on a rock, oh. and then it follows this little orphan dinosaur, and he meets a bunch of other friends that are racist, and then I don't know, I guess they <laughs> save the world. I didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a Trump movie. You know, it's, it's funny, Trump man. Movie. Like, if you watch movies, some of the movies that we that I've watched, like from back in the day. Now, if you go far enough back, so if you go back to like the '40s and '50s, you know, maybe even like early '60s, you watch some movies and you're like, you know what? Like, you give them leeway because you know they're not going to hold up to today to, to today's standard, but they were good. But you hit that one that one area, like '70s, '80s, and early '90s, you're like, oh, this is horrible. This is, this is yeah. Bad. They they made a lot of bad movies then. They made some good ones in the eighties and the nineties, but there yeah. was, I think the whole Steven Seagal thing should have never happened. Yeah, he's kind of a fucking freak show. That dude, man, freak he, it show. should have never like it. I I watched now, mind you, 
um, under siege when um, yeah. <laughs> when she comes out of the cake with her boobs. I left that yes. VHS rewound to that part often, if you know oh, what I yeah. mean. Oh, fuck. Jesus But, Christ. like, that is, that he, Steven Seagal is the reason why I still think I have a shot at Hollywood. Because if he can make it. <laughs> well, it's just funny to me, these fucking horrible actors, right? These people that call themselves actors, but they're not. Like John claude Van Damme. Actually, he's gotten better. I don't know if you've seen any of his... Like, he did a series for... I think it was Netflix, where he's making fun of himself. He plays John claude Van Damme, the actor, uh, action actor. And it's really fucking great. It's done really well. And he's good in it. But you go back to these... You know, it's just like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He wasn't a fucking actor. He was just a fucking... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I know, but people loved him. They loved yeah. watching his stuff. You know, there's a difference between an actor and just some fucking person that rakes in. Speaking of people, uh, to that, Tom Cruise, the fucking, you know, psychopath, he, his biggest movie ever in the history of movies for this dude might be in the history of movies ever to be released. I think they're almost close to a billion dollars at the box office. With right this now, Top with Gun. Top Gun yeah. Maverick? You have a wheeze, <clears throat> yeah. by the way. You have a wheeze right now. Like every yeah, second. Yeah, I drank. Here's what happened. So I was on stage last night, and uh, halfway through the first act, I screamed really loud, and I felt my throat kind of go. And I went, oh, no. No, no, no. And then after the show, I just poured tequila in my throat to try to S save it. Do you want to know what the, do you want to look at this the side vision of my the camera just the back fat but um you the, the thing is is that even <laughs> even when you, even when you have a wheeze yeah you have the fucking voice of a god I am god like I wouldn't say I am a god although some ish people, god ish a god ish Whatever Can I talk about means. actors again quick? Because you Go talked ahead. about Jean-Claude Van Damme. Nick yeah. Cage has de done the same thing, and that movie's supposed to be deadly funny, where he plays himself yeah. and there's like the super fan. I, I do want to see that. You know, but. it's funny about Nick Cage. Like, Raising Arizona, I thought was one of the greatest movies ever. Con Air, then, I thought was one of the greatest movies ever. What? <laughs> and then he did... You have a wheeze right now. You just had a wheeze. Yeah. So listen, but then he then he goes and does Con Air, which is a blowjob horror, horror shit fuck. But, you know, I mean, action, you know, whatever, fine. But then he did Leaving Las Vegas, which was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he just kind of got stuck in this tax situation where he wasn't paying his taxes, and he owed, like, fucking $7 trillion. So he started taking on all these B movies just to pay off his tax bills. It's just interesting to me, man. So it's they funny. The movies were horrible. I mean, they speaking, were... like there's a lot of tax evasion in Hollywood. Um, oh, yeah. Wesley, Wesley Snipes and my brother, not at that same time, but my brother served most of his 15 year sentence at, at McKean Federal in Pennsylvania. Good. And that's where Wesley Snipes did his tax evasion stuff. Or so yeah. when I would go visit my brother, I would always I asked him, and I guess he was in like the minimum. There's like a work camp kind of part of the prison yeah. where they were all just running around willy nilly like With their doing skirts chin on. ups, doing their chin ups. <laughs> we always end up back at prison. Um, so I had my daughter's birthday party yesterday. Yes, tell me about that. I woke up in the morning. So I procrastinate with everything. And Friday, all cocky like I was like, I'm going to go golfing and then I'm going to accomplish things. Yeah. I went golfing. I did the yard work because I wanted it was a pool party. Kelly's parents were coming for the first time. So oh, I was meeting nice. them. Oh, or I, I see. I, met, I see. You I wanted met to them, impress. But the, her family's coming to my home. So I wanted to impress. So I'm doing all this stuff. Kelly comes over in the morning to help, and I'm just a a, a, a freak. I'm freaking out. I've got like, <laughs> I'm like, well, there's just as she says, make a list. I'm like, fuck your list. I'm so big. I can't. And I realized <laughs> yesterday that you could light this building on fire, this house on fire, and I would be calm, cool, and collected. But mm. you have dishes in the sink. And, yeah. and some shit out of place when I have guests coming over, I am a mess inside. 
No bueno. No bueno. No did you bueno. when her parents when her parents came over, mm-hmm. did you wear your gold lame? I don't know what a lame is. Yeah. Um, but yes. Me neither. I heard it. I heard that word years ago, and I've always wanted to say it on a podcast. You just did. I find a bucket list. Bucket list. Oh, man. See, yeah. this is what the bullshit thing is. You're getting bucket list stuff signed off every day, and I'm just sitting in the same <laughs> freaking twilight zone where, like, my days, I'm on vacation right now from work, and yeah. I've had to golf, like, almost every day. Oh, poor Wayner. Poor I've, Wayne Wayne. I've had to, the, the other day, it was so hot, I just hung out by my pool. What oh, else am I going to do? Oh, man, white people problems. Wait a second. You're ish. black. I'm white blackish. You're black ish, You're I'm too. No, so black ish was a TV series, but I'm white ish. Yeah. Black ish was a TV series? Oh, my God. Yeah, it was that guy that made uh, Black AF. I am writing uh, a script that I'm calling Blackish. You're not telling me that's already happened. Yeah, that's happened, pal. Those fuckers. Yeah, they're doing really, really well with it. Hey, so uh, here's something in the news. I wanted to tell you this. This is interesting. So I, apparently, there was a, there's a series being shot in Mexico for Netflix, and uh, there was a, a really bad accident yesterday. Uh, it, they were, you know. When you're on set, when you're going back to your hotel or whatever, there's a van from set that'll pick up crew and cast members and take them back to the hotel. Apparently, there was a uh, car accident and uh, two of the actors died. What? And yeah, and some of the crew members were, uh, you know, seriously injured. Yeah, I just I just saw it this morning. That's horrible. So, man. so are they hired? Oh yeah, that's horrible. Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Holy shit! Just- Kidding. Just, that's a Father's Day episode, Wayne. Well, happy you know? Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I got to a mo- job. To that's most horrible. of us out there. Stop. No, you did it. I'm just... Look. You're just no reading joke. the news. Ladies reading- and gentlemen, no joke. No, seriously. that's it's No, that was crazy. I read it this morning. I was like, holy fuck. There's too horrible. much stuff. Is too much stuff. This it, It's almost like the pandemic, and I'm not even fucking around, because... The the film and television industry kind of mm. got punched in the face. Oh yeah, and it's kind of it's kind. Of, I I see more accidents and more death happening in Hollywood, and I wonder mm. if it's because they're trying to make up for lost time, so they're speeding up the process. Because you're Maybe. when you're shooting, like it's it's we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. Oh yeah, Always. and I'm wondering if maybe they're not taking like all of the precautions that they used to take. You know, when you look at the shootings, they're on supposed set. to be, man. They're supposed to be, but I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Like I, you know, here's something interesting. The big thing in Hollywood is hurry up to wait. So I mean, yeah. like, okay. So when I was doing the Fosters, there was one morning. My call time was like five a.m. and we were filming at some old psych ward that they turn into like a, 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 a police precinct, right? And 5 a.m., do you know I didn't go on set? I'm sitting in my trailer. I didn't get to set until about 3 p.m. Didn't so I you, sat yeah. in my in trailer your, for hours. In your costume, hours. too. Like, they wanted you dressed and stuff like that. Well, that here's the another... thing. So I have a whole thing about that now where I don't, I don't listen to them. So when I get there and the AD, the second AD comes up, he's like, okay, so you need to get in wardrobe. I go, uh, hold on a second. This isn't my first fucking rodeo, pal, or lady, or whatever you are. When am I going to set? Well, you got to be on set in an hour. Mm, do I? Do I? So I'll just go to my, I'll go get a breakfast burrito, sit in my, war, sit in my uh, trailer, and then when they knock on the door and say five minutes, I go, now I'll get in my wardrobe. Do you think that maybe that's mm-hmm. not the best? Way I don't give paying. a flying fuck but anymore. You're Wayne. making I don't obscene amounts of money to really? be a porno. Well, like, yeah. I mean, when I'm doing porn, what no, does it I'm take? In get in your wardrobe. Get ooh, take your pants off. That's like put your yeah. Fancy no, I get it. On. Well, okay. look, I don't like to walk around with my fucking huge dong out all the time. You should do a porno. Oh my god! But, like, do you think my wife would like that? I mean, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I, if you're acting. <laughs> do you know what I mean? 
Like if you're, yeah. it's pretend. Maybe, maybe, <gasps> maybe you guys can do like a soft core kind of. Wait a second. No. No nudity. Dude, I am like 50,000 years old. Nobody wants to watch my fucking, my huh. white hairy fucking ass up in do the you... air slinging mm -hmm. around with my hemorrhoids. That's a lie. That's a lie. I the have hemorrhoids the, right now, Wayne. The the daddy issues that are walking around this world oh, right now, God, there dude, are millions of women that would want to watch you. I okay. watch you I, from an artistic wait, what? stand. I, it's artistically. You're my friend. I'm not just going to. I watched that family movie you made. What I'm not. I'm just going to stop it. At, 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 I'm not going to continue. Oh, speaking of movies. Sorry for my ADHD. We tried to watch. Uh, <laughs> Look, a squirrel. Go ahead. Yeah. My daughter and I, because she's 10 now. So last night I was like, let's watch Ace Ventura. She's ready. Not ready. Not ready. We had, we had to shut it off when the flying. Yeah, it's two first five minutes. He's getting blowies. Well, here's something interesting about about that. So I made the mistake, and I don't know if it's a mistake, but when my son was about three, I was like, I want him to watch the stuff that I like. So I turned on the original. Now this is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And my son was like three, and I'm and halfway through it, I'm going, maybe I shouldn't have done this because I look at my son, <laughs> and he's just, oh, oh god, oh god, <laughs> and of course, you know, people said, oh, you shouldn't have done that. I'm like, you know, don't judge it. It's parenting. It's Father's Day. You know it's what I mean? Father's Day. So uh, I wanted to bring up something uh, just a minute ago, but I totally fucking forgot what I wanted to say, but it was poignant. God damn it. What was it? I don't remember now because we, we started talking about that. Uh, what the fuck was I going to talk? You know what? It doesn't even matter. I'm sure it'll it pop does in my matter head after we finish this episode. Then I'll think of it. It does matter, though. Hey, um, you know, it's funny, man. I don't go out anymore. Like, I just don't. We just don't. And if I do, I want to leave. I want to be home by like 9 p.m. And I want to play my blocks game on my cell phone because it's fucking addictive as fuck. So last night after the show, we got out of there at about 11 p.m. Saw, you know, meet and greet with the audience members. And then we go over to this place called Rocco's, which is uh, on Ventura Boulevard in Studio City. And, uh, all of a sudden, I looked down at my clock, my my phone, and I go, "It's one o'clock in the fucking morning." Huh? What the fuck are you doing? Why? So then I stayed a little longer, sure. and then I got home. I'm like stumbling around. It's pitch dark. My wife's sleeping. I'm I'm trying to fucking get the key into the door, and I'm going, "Dude, you're not fucking twenty five. You're not. You're sixty million. Like you you're can't not do that this. either. You can't. Do you when you go out? Do you ever? Because I'm not a big drinker." right no my my um anyways so when when you go out do you go out with the intention of just having a couple or do you go out and go tonight is gonna i'm gonna fucking destroy tonight like there how do have you been nights that i've said to myself i'm gonna destroy tonight and i and i always meet that 100 percent. but normally like you know normally i'll just be like oh, i'll have a couple beers i'll remember just have a couple that beers. remember that douchebag in austin when we were out oh, and dancing at that yes, one bar that... and then he was like he came down and what did he do like he... he put his fucking cigarette no it was a shot glass he came over now the bar wasn't even packed he's was standing like at us. the bar yeah we have a table quite a distance maybe i don't know 20 30 feet from where he was standing he could have put his shot glass anywhere in the bar he walks directly up to our table and puts it down on our table. And we just kind of looked at each other like, what the fuck did he just do? And like then you're a monster. Like you don't that because that was an aggressive move. Yeah, it, that's an aggressive move. No he words needed to be said. None. It was, and I tell you, man, like, remember, I looked at you and I go, oh, my God. So what did I do? I fucking got up. I walked <laughs> directly over to him. And I put my fucking beer bottle down right by him and then walked back to our table. And I'm like, yeah. so now what? Now, for no reason, like nothing, none of this makes sense, but I'm just no. following suit. So now what? 
Do you know what I mean? And nothing. We'll find out. Nothing. We'll find out the next time I come down to Texas and we go out. <laughs> I want to share something with you guys. Yeah, do it. So I have a good friend of mine. Okay. Other than you. Jeez, and we've talked Chris, about him. I'm jealous. We, well, don't be. Um, okay. He, it's, it's, it's his, he's had a bunch of kids in the last couple of years. Like so, a, like a pack. So Steve's whole thing. So my buddy, Steve Hydingo, we worked together. Yeah. I said your name. Hydinga. Hydinga. Steve, Steve's a, sorry, carry on. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's not done. There's four more seconds of ah there. <laughs> um, okay. Go ahead. So Steve is a handsome fella. Okay. Right? He's been with his wife for a long time, but back in his days, he mm. used to he used to mac on the ladies before he he met his bride, mm. and he had always said before, you know, he got he's like, you know what? Because I was I was such a stud back in the day, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up having girls as a dad. Mm. So they had their daughter mm-hmm. a couple years ago. Then they just had twin girls. Oh, wow! So this is his first Father's Day with like 17 children. All of the same mom, too, which is unheard of. <laughs> and I could say that. I've got a couple baby mamas up in this. But he wrote us a review because he's been listening to us since day one. He's actually oh. a huge. He's a huge fan of our short um, episodes, which a lot of people oh, are. Yeah. 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 Some yeah, people yeah. wish they were a little longer. But that's you know, why they come back next week. We're, at. we're comfy. Yeah, we're comfy here. We're comfy it's where we're a, at. After too long. It just gets raw. It just gets weird, and we start it's, we start yeah. drooling on each other. And we he do wants to slobber me, and I'm just like, no, dude. I start making out with my microphone. Yeah, tonguing the hole in the top. Yeah, which is really weird because you don't do that unless you're, you know, sexually frustrated. Probiotic. Exactly, science On probiotics. Uh huh. But I, what I will say, what I will say to Steve. Is I really appreciate the truth behind this. Well, I want to hear it. Gents, let's cut to the chase. Great pod, Alex and team. Love spending the little time I have listening to Scooby rhyme off a few fun facts from his every day. I find that I can relate to most of the content and enjoy his perspective. Five stars. I love this guy. I love him. And did he not mention you? I mean. Oh, I'm, I'm coming up. Okay. I, now okay, let let, okay. let me digress well, we can for a stop second. There. Let's stop there. Just no, stop we're gonna there. Keep, it's a oh great no, review. we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Listen, no, um, that's a great I review. Have, Leave I it. have I have fought fires. I have been in burning buildings with this man. I have you saved say puppies. That, I have saved puppies from from um, recliners with him. Long story. The other this is carry. Like, we're going to continue. The yeah. other guy. Wow. <laughs> what can I say? Best sidekick ever. Truly the Robin to Alex's Batman. Ooh. I think this guy has what it takes to possibly act as a T as TSA agent number three in a drama that most lonely housewives watch. We were both in the <laughs> we were both. So here's the quick backstory. So I we he he calls me up one day years ago. He goes, Listen, we could be an extra in this show called The Hands Made Tale. So we we go, they're looking for soldiers and TSA agents. Well, I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm an ex-soldier. So we get cast. I get cast as a TSA agent. He gets cast as a soldier because I looked more like a TSA agent 45 <laughs> pounds ago. And uh, so well done, Steve. You did. Hey, Steve. Thank you. And I like all it's the not things done. you said. It's not done. God damn it, Steve. You know what? You fucking long-winded. Watch this. What impresses me most is how Alex doesn't skip a beat while someone else tries to completely derail a train that can only be described as true art on rails. Thanks for everything. Keep up the great work. I support you. Love, Stephen Hydinga. Stephen Hydinga. This one. Fuck yourself. 